Hey everyone, today we're going to be solving an AWS lab from Cloud Academy. It is the high availability best practices for VPCs since I've been asked to show how to solve it a couple times. Before we get into the lab, I want to talk about VPC high availability. What that means in practice is that your core network or VPC should continue to support your workload seamlessly even if one of your AZs on your VPC goes down. At a VPC level, we did that by deploying some nets on multiple AZs. The recommendation is to use three different AZs, but you can get by with two, which is what the lab uses. The reason for that is you want to be mindful of the cost. Each NAT gateway costs $30 a month. So if you have a lot of VPCs, uh, you can see how that can get pretty out of hand very quickly. So to provide full HA, we need each AZ to be fully independent, which means you deploy a NAT gateway for each availability zone and instruct the subnets to use the NAT gateway in the respective AZ via route table entries. So in the diagram we have on the screen, we have AZA and AZB. We deploy a NAT gateway on each AZ and the route table entry indicates how each subnet should be configured. AZA subnets should point to the NAT gateway on AZA and AZB subnets should be pointed to the NAT gateway on AZB. So let's go ahead and get started with the lab. Amazon VPC high availability, best practices from Cloud Academy. We're going to apply what we just talked about, which includes validating the setup for each availability zone. We'll see what subnets are given to us. We'll see what the NAT gateway configuration looks like and the route tables. Um, and we can see the diagram. It's actually the same one we just talked about, which was done on purpose. And so let's just wait until the lab is fully provisioned and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, the lab is completely provisioned. Let's log into the account. Uh, let's grab the credentials. So because this is a VPC lab, uh, I guess we can assume we need to go into the VPC module. Let's take a look at what's given to us. So we have a Cloud Academy Labs VPC. And we're going to have some subnets in here too. So let's go check a, uh, take a look at the subnets. Uh, and let's do some filtering here because uh, just to get a cleaner output here, just to filter only the, v the subnets we're, uh, we're concerned with. And let's take a look at the subnets we have. We have a public subnet and let's just clean up the, the visibility here, the preferences, so we can actually uh, have easier access to the availability zone. So we have public subnet one on AZA. So let's just take a note of that. I just find it easier to take notes like this. Um, it just makes it easier to kind of keep track of the subnets and, and what AZ they're allocated to. So public summit one, public summit two, we can see it's on AZB. Let's go ahead and write down the other ones. Um, that's a little weird. So maybe this is why there's been so many uh, challenges with this lab because uh, the names don't really match the availability zone. I'm not sure if that's on purpose or not. I don't really think they intended it to be this way. We have private subnet 1B actually being part of AZA. Um, so let's just write these down. Uh, it looks like that the mapping is done with the number. So private subnet 1A and 1B are actually both in A, AZA, and private subnet 2 belong to AZB. So let's just make a note of that. To B to A, they belong to AZB. And this is going to help us when we look at the routed tables, just to make sure we're going to the right place. Now let's take a look at the NAT gateways we have. So we have two NAT gateways, which is what we expect for two AZs for high availability. So let's copy the NAT gateway ID. This is for public subnet 2, which is for AZB. And then let's go take a look at the other one, public subnet 1, which is correct. Let's copy the NAT gateway ID. And let's just take a note that this is for AZA. 
And again, this is going to help us uh, to, to address any mismatches on the routing tables. So let's take a look at the routing tables. Let's filter again by the VPC, um, just so we have a cleaner output here. And let's start, uh, I guess, with this one. Uh, so no subnet association for the, for the default route table, which is fine. We have a public subnet, which is good. Um, an internet gateway, that looks fine. Let's take a look at this first routing table, private subnet 1A. As we've seen from our table here, um, it's pointed to that NAT gateway. We just want to make sure that's the right one because private subnet 1A should have the NAT gateway for the AZA. So let's make sure that matches and looks like it does. So that running table is fine. Let's look at the other one. This is 1B. Uh, should again point to A. And it does. So these two look fine. Let's head over to private subnet 2B. Now these two remaining routing tables should point to NAT gateway B. So let's take a look. Yep, some that points to B, NAT gateway should be pointing to B as well, and it's not. So let's go ahead and update that real quick. So proper NAT gateway. And finally, let's take a look at the other private subnet. This should also be pointing to AZB. and looks like it also needs to be fixed. So let's go ahead and do that. Save changes, and now that's, that's, those are all the routing tables we needed to review. So I think we should be done with this. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can do the validation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's go check real quick. Um, I think it, I think this is what the intention was maybe with the lab that the names don't really match. Uh, they're designated AZ. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I hope this helps clarify how a VPC can be made highly available. The main concept is to think about each AZ to be fully independent from each other uh, and to make sure that it's configured in a way that if one AZ goes down, everything else should continue to work properly.